Well, now I'd like to introduce you to the Digilent 4x4 keypad. We'll take a look at scanning techniques as well as multiple key press detection. This is the keypad that's included in the NI MyRio Embedded Systems Kit. It's the Digilent PMOD KYPD for keypad. Here's some of its features. It has 16 switches arranged in a matrix format. That's 4x4 switches. It has eight lines available for scanning and detection. It has internal pull-up resistors as well as internal current limiting resistors. This keypad is capable of single key press as well as multiple key press combinations. Let's take a look at the circuit details. Here we have the array of 16 single pole, single throw push button switches. They're arranged along columns as well as rows. Here we have 10K pull-up resistors to VCC. You could also connect this terminal to ground if you like, and then the 10K resistors would become pull-down resistors. You also have a collection of current limiting resistors. They deal with the possibility that when you have two switches closed, as I'm indicating here, and if you trace this path out, you'll see that you have a short circuit. This guards against the possibility of driving the two column lines with two different voltage levels. Now let's take a look at how you might connect 16 push button switches using what might be considered a more intuitive approach. What I'm going to do here is connect one side of the switches to ground. Then whenever the push button switch is pressed, it establishes that connection to ground. When it's not pressed, we need to establish a known voltage level, and that's the purpose of the pull-up resistor. It pulls the line high when the switch is open. Now we would need to have a pull-up resistor for each of the remaining switches. We'd have an arrangement like this. And this is what we send to the digital inputs. We require 16 inputs. Now we would only use this method if you need every possible combination of open and closed switches. And that's a little bit more than 65,000 possible combinations. If you only have one or a few key processes at a time, then the matrix connection is superior. Let's see why. 16 is four times four. And with the matrix approach, you only need four digital outputs and you only need four digital inputs. That's a total of eight versus 16. We also would only need four pull-up resistors instead of 16 pull-up resistors. The matrix connection uses far fewer resources. Now let's take a look at getting a sense of how we can do the keypad scanning. I'll begin by drawing the 16 switches. I'll add the row and column lines. The switch establishes a connection between a column line and a row line. We have a switch at the intersection in, of each of those two types of lines. Here we have no connection though. Un unless the switch is closed, those lines are not connected. Let's imagine that this column line is grounded. With this switch closed, the low level of the ground connection then is broadcast along the row line and then we would be able to detect that this line is being pulled to a low voltage level. Now, if this connection was left floating, then even with the switch closed, we wouldn't know what this voltage level is. That means we need some other mechanism to drive that line to the opposite state, and that's what we do with the pull-up resistor. When the column line is left floating, then the pull-up resistor pulls this voltage level to the high level. But if the column level is grounded, that overrides the pull-up resistor, especially when the switch is closed, and then we can detect a low level here again. But when the switch opens and breaks the connection between the column and row lines, then the pull-up resistor reasserts itself and we see a high level appearing over here. So with this basic idea, we see that we can pull the column line low and then detect that the row line has been pulled low and that tells us the state of the push button. Now we could also use pull down resistors. Let me show you how you do that. In this case, the pull down resistor is pulling the row line low. When the column line is at high impedance level or, or high Z as it's called, or just abbreviated Z, 
then this row line is at a low level. It's being pulled low. To drive that column line to the opposite state, we would impress a high level voltage. Then when the switch is open, we observe low. When the switch is closed, it connects the column and row lines together, and that broadcasts this high level voltage along the row line. And that's how we could then again detect the state of the push button. All right, now I'd like to introduce some streamlined notation to help us better understand the scanning process. The open circle indicates an open switch, while the closed circle indicates that the switch is closed. When the switch is closed, I will indicate the connection between the column lines and row lines like this. Now I'm going to assume for the rest of this discussion that we're using pull-up resistors on each line, and I'll use capital Zs to indicate the high impedance state, and H and L to indicate either high or low voltage levels. The four column lines are driven by my Rio digital outputs, while the four row lines are sensed by my Rio digital inputs. Now the keypad scanning process revolves around driving each of the column lines to a low level in turn, and that will override the pull-up resistor. I'll begin by pulling this leftmost column line low and leaving the rest at high impedance state. With this line pulled low, then we note that since the switch is open at that intersection, here's another open switch that would also be pulled high still, and the same idea applies for the rest of the lines, then we would say while we are pulling this column line low, we observe that all four row lines that are at a high level. Let's move on to the next line. Now for similar reasons, since none of the switches is closed, then all of the row lines are still being pulled high. Make a record of that. Next I'll advance this to the third column line. The whole or the entire line is pulled low and where we have the switch closure that also pulls the row line low. Since all the remaining three switches are open, then we observe that the output is this pattern, high, low, high, high. Finally, to complete the scan, we would pull the fourth column line low. Again, all the switches are open. That means we would sense high levels, and that would be the result of our fourth part of the scan. And looking at this, we see that we detected a single location where the line was pulled low. And in general, this is the result of the scanning process. We see a low value wherever a single key press occurs. Now we can detect all possible single button key presses this way. What about holding down two buttons at the same time? Let's close this second switch down here in the lower left corner. And again, that establishes a connection between the two column and row lines. Remember, this is still a no connect at that point. Now let's begin the scanning process by driving this line low. This is what we would observe. High, 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 and then low. Let's move to the second column. No switches are closed. We observe that all the lines are pulled high. Let's move on to the third column. Pull this line low, and we detect this pattern. And finally, we move to the fourth column. We see that all the lines are being pulled high. You look at your results. I see a low and a low, and sure enough, those correspond to the two locations of the two buttons that are being pressed. This scanning method works for all possible two button key presses. Now let's give this a try for three button key presses. Let me begin by closing this switch right here. We'll see if this works. Now I'm going to do the scan process fairly quickly here. You might want to pause and replay if needed to, to better study what's happening here. As we look at the results of the scan, we see these three detections, and that course corresponds to these three buttons right here. Looks like it worked just fine for this case. 
question is, does it work for all cases? Let me try opening this switch and closing this switch over here. Now as we take a look at driving this column line low, we see that it broadcasts a low value on these two row lines. And then our digital inputs would see that pattern. Here none of the switches are closed. We see all of the row lines are high level. Now let's drive this third column line low. Of course that broadcasts a low level over here, but here's something interesting. This closed switch means this line is also at a low level. Even though we are driving it with high impedance, it's actually being forced to low. And this is equivalent to driving two column lines at the same time. And we know that can't be good. With this switch being closed then, we see that the low value is broadcast along the bottom row line, and we see this pattern. Finally, for the fourth line, I think you'll agree that all those would be pulled high. Now, these three lows, that worked fine. The problem is we see a false indicator right here. And sometimes this false indicator is referred to as a ghost key press. We get this any time that two column lines are linked by switches and we are also linking two row lines because when you trace this grounded line, you see that it ends up getting broadcast to two different columns and that gives you a false reading out here on the row lines. From this, we conclude that some three key button presses work while others do not. You might try bumping this up one, looking at four button key presses. It's similar, some work, most do not though. The key again is we look for combinations that do not link across multiple rows and multiple columns. Take a look at some quick examples. This one works fine. This one also works, even though we have multiple rows being linked along this column, we still are not linking across columns. So this particular combination works fine. However, if I move to a closed switch right here, here we link two row lines together by these switches and link together two column lines. And that means you will see a false indication up here. Well, five or more key presses, I'll leave you with this. Challenge yourself to discover the highest number of simultaneous key presses that does not cause ghosting.